Julian Jackson had otherworldly power, and he used it to great effect. One thing that really stands out about Jackson's knockdowns is how bewildered his competitors are afterwards. As if they'd never experienced that kind of power before. There were no second chances with the Hawk, who could KO opponents through a tight guard. A partially landed shot tended to turn opponents into drunken boxers. So if Jackson caught you clean, it was most likely over. If you disrespected him by, say, not touching gloves, he probably wouldn't let you get past the first round. Today, we're going to look at the intricacies of Jackson's style and figure out exactly how he managed such terrifying power. We'll begin with a very brief half-minute explanation of his style before jumping right into his power building techniques. Jackson was more of a boxer brawler than a boxer puncher. Boxer punchers box to set up one big shot, but the Hawk boxed to stay safe until he was ready to attack, then went full in. Jackson could go from outboxing, utilizing shifts, V-steps, and C-steps, to absolutely demolishing an opponent with savage blows in no time. He loved to stay in the line of fire and just exchange, betting that he would come out on top. With his head movement and angled footwork keeping him safe as he threw, he usually won that bet. So how did Jackson use these dual inclinations to set up some of the hardest punches ever seen in boxing? A great deal of Jackson's power came from how he positioned himself when he punched. In general, a long stance will be better for generating power in linear punches because there's more room to move your weight from your back foot to your front foot. And a squared up wide stance is generally better for putting power into hooks because you could transfer more weight from side to side. Jackson had a natural ability to position his feet in the best way possible to build momentous amounts of power. A common tactic for him was to transition from boxing to brawling by stepping into his cross. Stepping into the cross is technically wrong in a textbookish kind of way. But several legends have sworn by it, including Joe Lewis, who knows a bit about throwing crosses. More importantly, stepping in set Jackson's body into a squared up position better suited to throw hooks, which are the natural follow-up for crosses anyways. When opponents tried to exit exchanges, Jackson would stay put rather than sacrifice his stability to follow them. He instead turn shifted, keeping his powerful base to catch his fling opponent from southpaw. He would also laterally shuffle to create angles and add even more momentum to the punch. These angles could sometimes result in a punch that had the movement dynamics of a hook, but came from the front to split an opponent's guard like a cross. But Jackson had a gift for generating power even from bad positions where he had no business scoring a KO. And he had a number of creative ways to do this. One of the things he excelled at was creating space for shots in instances where there was no space. He did this by framing and pivoting to follow opponents, or by shuffling off angle, as mentioned earlier. But Jackson could add a lot of momentum to even close range punches by shifting in unusual ways. This meant that, although his punch may have only traveled a short distance, Jackson had put a lot of momentum into it. The thing about shifting is that it allows for a lot more hip rotation and follow through. And Jackson did this forwards and backwards.
What's really crazy is that Jackson did this laterally as well. Pulling his hip through so far, he had at times show opponents his back. Jackson committed to his punches so much that sometimes he would throw himself off balance. Put another way, Jackson threw as if he believed he had no chance of missing. And the thing is, because his punches were so powerful, this actually paid off for him. On top of all that, Jackson had fantastic counters. He was especially great at slipping jabs to land hard hooks, or crossover rights. He also employed a dangerous check hook that ensured opponents paid for their aggression with interest. And the creative angles he used on his punches helped him to find ways through the openings in his opponent's guard. Like Thomas the Hitman Hearns, Jackson threw roundhouse rights. These not only came from an angle opponents couldn't always see, but also added far more power to the blow. His outboxing also really can't be understated and helped him to control the ring. He was fantastic at utilizing pendulum steps, fainting in and out with broken rhythm to set up shots. That said, when martial artists think of Julian Jackson, they think of one thing, unbelievable, uncontained, legendary power. All these years later, and there's still a lot to be learned from the Hawk. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe, as it seems to really matter to the algorithm once again. If you'd like to learn more about how to fight like the Hawk, you can check out my books on power, footwork, and defense, all listed below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.